Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my March 2021 reading wrap-up. Dane reads. So I just have the one book to update you on today, and that is Welcome Descent by Cam Wolf, our very own. He runs a YouTube channel called Page Nomad. Uh, this is a self-published slash indie novel. Cam did a really good job with all like the cover design, the layout, all that sort of thing. I'm not sure who the editor was, but it reads as though it's been edited, which is good. It has a content warning as well, which always nice to see. Uh, quite a dark novel. I think you can tell that it was it's an indie book. Um, but there's still some great stuff in there. Uh, I didn't spot any errors or anything like that as well. The storyline is um, basically there's like a storm rolling in, which the storm itself is almost like a character. And uh, this asshole guy with a dark past is like stuck at home. And um, the descent is basically him getting out of the sour block, which it reminded me of like a cross between Groundhog Day and High Rise by J.G. Ballard. Overall, pretty good stuff. I gave it a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5. Uh, I would say professional quality and up there in sort of the top 10, maybe top 20% of uh, indie books that I've read. So uh, yeah, if you like a thriller and dark shit, go, go read it. Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my March 2021 wrap up. The year is just flying by. I have one book to talk to you about today and that is Unfinished Portrait by Agatha Christie, writing as Mary Westmacott. So this is actually the uh, final Agatha Christie book for me. I've now read all of her novels in her own name and all of her Westmacott books. And it was a nice little end because I think this is kind of a quintessential Westmacott book. They get billed as like romance but I would say they're more like contemporary, at least contemporary to the time. This one describes itself as a stunning novel of death and destiny. Also jealousy. There's a guy called Dermot in this who's an absolute... yeah. Anyway, I did enjoy it. Uh, full review of it coming soon. Uh, for here, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Would recommend to other Christie fans who are looking for something a bit new, um, but probably not the best place to start if you've never read Christie before. All right, guys, just the one book to update you on today, and that is The Gods Themselves by Isaac Asimov. This basically follows what happens where there's this like pump that's sort of pumping antimatter between two different parallel universes, but it's making the uh, laws of each of those universes sort of leak through, and so it's bad news, basically. Oh, I dropped the book. Uh, it was okay. I had heard really positive things about it, and I just found it just okay. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, and a fairly weak one. Uh, I do tend to prefer Asimov's short stories over his novels anyway, but I also think this was one of his weaker novels, at least of the ones that I've read. But hey-ho, I ticked it off. All right, guys, got two books to wrap up for you today. The first is A Fall of Moon Dust by Arthur C. Clarke. This is basically about, like, a sort of a skimmer that's on the moon flying over the, the um, like, the fine sands and it falls 15 meters below the surface and it kind of follows what happens on board that ship plus also the rescue attempt. Funnily enough, I thought of this as being a lot like The Martian uh, and I saw on Goodreads somebody had asked in relation to this, they were looking for sci-fi books that were like this or The Martian where there's like no antagonist and the storyline itself is just driven by human survival. I couldn't think of any off the top of my head, although I'm sure Asimov's got a few. But yeah, really good read actually, very uh, very gripping. Uh, I gave it a four out of five, and I definitely think if you've never read Arthur C. Clarke before, um, it's not a bad place to start. I mean, you might want to start with like 2001 A Space Odyssey or whatever, but uh, I'm just glad I picked this one up. I thought it was very good. Uh, the blurb, terrible, but the story, yeah. And then I read The Plague by Albert Camus. Uh, I've been getting more and more into Camus recently, and this is one of the ones that I feel as though I should have already read, especially given the time that we're living in. Um, I actually kind of was expecting to see more stuff in it that I could relate to COVID-19, because this is very much about like a resurgence of the bubonic plague. Um, but what I like about Camus, well, what I've been enjoying in books in general recently is when they include like philosophical questions that kind of push the reader to ask themselves things. And um, I think that, that, uh, that, that Camus did it really well with this one. So, um, I mean, Camus is a philosopher in general, so I kind of was expecting that. But yeah, I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5, a full review coming soon. Might even be in my favourites of the quarter, we will see. All right, guys, just got the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is White Shroud Poems 1980 to 1985 by Allen Ginsberg. It's actually a pretty hard book to track down. Um, it was worth reading though, it's one of Ginsberg's later collections. I actually think the reason it's hard to track down, there aren't that many copies of it, because it was only really published for a few years. And then I think it just went out of print and all the poems from it went into his collected poems because he was dead. But yeah, probably like a 3.5 out of 5, pretty good. Uh, at this point I feel like I'm not really getting much new from Ginsberg because I've read so much of his stuff. But I'm still glad I read it and I'm going to read you a quick and very short poem here. Prophecy. 
As I'm no longer young in life, and there seem to me not so many pleasures to look forward to, how fortunate to be free to write of cars and wars, truths of eras, throw away old useless ties and pants that don't fit. Hello everybody, just me, and uh, I have uh, The Santaroga Barrier here by Frank Herbert, the author of Dune. Uh, this is kind of like in a, a, small time, a small town American vibe thing going on. Uh, it's like very paranoid. This guy goes in to inspect all this weird stuff that's going on. Like there, there's no mental illness. Um, they like get their petrol from themselves and stuff, and they're like this very insular community basically. And this guy goes in to investigate, uh, and then weird things start to happen basically. It did remind me of um, Desperation by Stephen King a little bit. It, it just has this horrible like claustrophobic vibe, uh, horrible in a good way. Like it's cloying. When you put the book down, you can still kind of feel the presence of the town, which I think is pretty good. So uh, because of that, I would give it a pretty low, but still there, four out of five. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is The Other Side of the Sky by Arthur C. Clarke. Arthur C. Clarke is obviously a sci-fi legend. These are short stories. Um, the title collection, the title story is probably my favorite one. And actually that surprised me because it's all told in the first person, but um, due to the nature of the story, it's kind of like this old spacer sharing some of his space stories. So it kind of had to work that way. But usually I don't really like uh, first person narratives. It kind of depends, I guess. Um, but I thought it worked really well in the other side of the sky. The other stories in this were great as well. Uh, four out of five for me. This has also prompted me to add all of Arthur C. Clarke's novels to my wish list, as well as the collected stories of Arthur C. Clarke. Um, I, I mean, it reminded me of what I love about things like iRobot by a a Isaac Asimov, and it's just a cracking short story collection. Probably a good place even to start if you've never read Arthur C. Clarke before. I mean, I've only read about four. Uh, but yeah, great, uh, four out of five. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is The Honorary Consul by Graham Greene. This is kind of almost like a farce. It's set in Argentina in an unnamed village, which kind of allows him to be inventive with it and whatnot and the layout and stuff. Uh, basically, the title guy, the honorary consul, is the British consul there, and uh, this rebel group try to kidnap the American consul, get it wrong, accidentally get the British consul, and we follow this doctor called Dr. Pla, who knows this guy, and he gets brought in to look at him after he's been kidnapped, and like they recognise each other, but it turns out he has his own reasons for maybe not wanting this guy around. All in all, I did enjoy it, pretty typical green, it's not his best book, which is why it's not one of his more well-known ones, but I still did very much enjoy it. I gave it a week four out of five and uh, would definitely recommend to other Graham Greene fans or to anyone who thinks that description sounds fun. Hello, it is me. I have three books to update you on today. So two of these I finished in bed last night. So this is uh, Asterix, La Serpe d'Or by Argosini and A. Adetso. And this is Asterix et les Goth by Argosini and A. Adetso. So uh, book two, book three in the Asterix series, I've been reading them in the French. Uh, Asterix et les Goth was interesting because it in introduced um, uh, the Germans, and they have like a different script, like a gothic font um, to their text, which is quite cool. Um, although it did occasionally make it difficult to read. And uh, Le Serp d'Or, this was the uh, edition anniversaire with uh, 16 extra pages for Lete Gaulois, uh, Gaulish Summer. So, um, yeah. This was really interesting because it had loads of behind the scenes stuff on how it was made, uh, which also kind of pushed my French a bit more, which was good. I learned some really interesting stuff and like it pointed out, for example, some of the in-jokes in some of the panels and there was like a reference to a dog um, that ha doesn't appear till book number five, I think. Both of these I gave four out of five to and I'm looking forward to reading more Asterix. And then I read Galapagos by Kurt Vonnegut. So this is satire. Um, basically this guy a million years into the future is looking back to 1986. Um, yeah, it's kind of, Lots of jokey stuff. It was very well written, and uh, I whizzed through it. it. Only read, it only took like a day or two to read. But I haven't tabbed out a huge amount for it because there's not that much to say about it, uh, other than that it's pretty typical Vonnegut. I gave it probably a strong 3.5 out of five. Then I read The Discworld Companion by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Briggs. So this has been my bedtime book for a couple of months now. Um, it's basically. It's like a cross between uh, an encyclopedia and a dictionary. Uh, it's got here the Discworld A to Z. 
um, and it's just got a bunch of entries about stuff in the disc world like you read through it or you can dip into it to refer or whatever I read through it like a dictionary so it took a fair old while uh, and then towards the end there were just a few interviews and like bonus bits when I brought it back through as a main book. Overall I can't really give it more than a 3 out of 5 because it was very dull and tedious even though it was Discworld but uh, I am glad I ticked it off because the completionist in me is very happy even though I basically had to read a dictionary. And then I read The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare. So this is the Folio Society edition, introduction by Flora Robson, designs by Carl Toms. Uh, and the introduction was really interesting actually. It's a really beautiful edition of the play as well and it's got like you know, illustrations and stuff. But um, it's kind of, I guess, yeah, like I read it as a comedy anyway. I mean, there were some great just lines in it, great snappy bits of dialogue. Uh, in, in the introduction, Fiona did say that um, like the two lovers in it or whatever are traditionally played by um, like not so well known actors. And so the stars or whatever, the well known names who get attached to it, tend to perform like right at the start and right at the end and almost have walk on parts. Um, but that's okay, and like she was also saying, Hermione, who is a great character by the way, um, but she's like one of the inspirational historical female figures, you know, that um, from like, when I say historical, I mean from literature hundreds of years ago, you know, uh, there, are, there are quite a dearth of female characters for some reason. So um, yeah, I enjoyed this, I would give it a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5. Hello everybody, it is me, I have some books to wrap up for you. Uh, oh god! Some of these I might have already wrapped up, I don't know, but if so, we'll just do them again quickly. So we have The Green Brain by Frank Herbert. I'm pretty sure I have already wrapped this up. Um, but also, some of my wrap-up footage got corrupted, so I actually need to go back and wrap up some stuff I read even further back. Uh, this one, see, I don't even really remember this one. Oh yeah, okay, no, th I do remember this one. This is the one with the weird, like, the, the, the uh, antagonists in this, it's like a, like a sci-fi Aliens vs Humans novel except the antagonists are very earthbound, um, they're like insects basically, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but there was a very creepy scene where you have a person who's basically made up of insects and they figured out a way to emulate human speech and just the way Herbert wrote it, it was very uh, disturbing, but still overall just like 3.5 out of 5 it was alright. Then we have Steppenwolf by Hermann Hesse. This is a novel about um, like a 40 something year old man who kind of hates people. It's kind of the quandary of like him being a lone wolf but wolves are always pack, also pack animals so it's that quandary of like loneliness versus other people. Also he's made himself a promise that he's going to shoot himself I think it was by uh, on his 50th birthday. So it's kind of dark, lots of dark themes, translated from German, uh, very poetic, very beautifully written and uh, I've been describing it as like Catcher in the Rye for like disillusioned 30s and 30 somethings and 40 somethings which I just about qualify as. So yeah, 4.5 out of 5, full review coming soon. Then I read uh, The Wit and Wisdom of Discworld by Terry Pratchett. This is edited by Stephen Briggs who is one of Pratchett's long term collaborators. And my problem with this, I gave this a 3 out of 5 and the reason being, it's just kind of lazy. Like Briggs has just gone through all of the Discworld books, selected some of his favourite passages and then that they're published in this. But that makes it like really spoilery if you haven't read all of the Discworld. And if you have read all of the Discworld, I don't think it really adds too much. So I don't really know why it exists to be honest. But um, yeah, I ticked it off. And then some Shakespeare. So we're going to start with King John. These are all the Folio Society editions. Uh, they're very pretty. I don't know if I can get it out. Oh, that's what she said. Uh, come on, King John. Get out your slipcase. There we go. So um, yeah, really beautiful. And they've got some like really nice illustrations and stuff in. Let me try and find one. Oh, this is the bastard who was my favourite character in this. Uh, this is basically like a play of, about like military manoeuvring between the English, the French and the Spanish. Uh, pretty dull to be honest, although there's some mentions of Richard the Lionheart or I don't know, Cour de Lyon or whatever it is <laughs> in French, but at Cour, Cour not Cour. And uh, anyway, yeah it was alright, 3.5 out of 5. I've never really been one for his like historical plays about the kings and queens. I do like, you know, like Julius Caesar and Antony and Cleopatra. I mean, I've got all the King Henrys coming soon and I'm just dreading it to be honest because I, I don't care. Uh, anyway, then we have Timon of Athens. This was surprisingly good, not one of his particularly well-known ones. Uh, quite a short play about um, lending and borrowing money, basically. Some really great lines of dialogue in it. This is one of the ones that to me stands out as one of his lesser-known plays that was really enjoyable for me, so I gave this one a 4 out of 5. 
And then finally, the two gentlemen of Verona, and this was also a four out of five. Uh, and this is one of the ones where I, I always find it interesting where you see like Shakespeare's uh, phrases out in the wild, because obviously he, he contributed so many to our uh, you know civilization and society. So uh, this was one of the way, one of the ones where like there's just constantly line after line where I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So um, probably out of the three, this is the one I'd most like to go and see performed, but I think the one I'd most like to reread is probably Timon of Athens. I thought that was great. But yeah, four out of five. I have two books to wrap up for you today. The first is Cup of Gold by John Steinbeck. This is historical fiction. Um, following Captain Henry Morgan, the pirate, and basically it kind of tells his life. I mean, it ends with him dying, uh, which I suppose it would do. But uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, it was interesting to read Steinbeck's taste on his take on historical fiction. I mean, I, I will be honest. I was reading it thinking like, oh, he could have been working on an, another, uh, you know, of mice and men while he was doing this. But uh, it's still, yeah, it was good. Three point five out of five. Reminded me of some of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's historical fiction, and actually, I have some more of that up there to get to soon. Uh, and then I read King Henry IV Part 1 by William Shakespeare. This is the Folio Society edition. I don't have the other parts, unfortunately. So uh, make of that as you will. But it was, yeah, it was quite cool. Some illustrations in it, which were very nice. Uh, some of the action took place in the Midlands, not far from where I grew up. So there was like references to Coventry and what I think was Sutton Coldfield, but it had a different name. But this was in the 15th century or whatever, when it, 16th century. So, um, you can kind of forgive it for that. But yeah, it was interesting, 3.5 out of 5. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Shakespeare's King plays because it's basically just him like sucking the dick, metaphorical dick of the British monarchy um, whilst glamorising war and saying how shit the French are. So, you know, I, I don't really agree with it from a messaging point of view, but, you know, it's a p piece of propaganda, I think. If you look at it as a piece of propaganda, it's all right. Uh, not necessarily, again, historically accurate, but there's some good stuff in it and some cracking dialogue. So, yeah, 3.5 out of 5. And then, off the back of that, I read King Henry V, which is a slightly stronger 3.5 out of 5, but largely the same stuff goes. Um, this as well, so I have, what is it, it's got the folio edition. Passages which occur only in the quarter are enclosed in square brackets, and those which occur only in the first folio in brace brackets. So the once more into the breach speech, which is the main thing I knew about this play going into it, was only in the first folio edition and not in the quarto, so... Anyway, yeah, King Henry V, yeah, slightly stronger, 3.5 out of 5. Basically, King Henry IV Part 1, I'll round down to 3 stars and good read. This one I'll round up to 4, but it's a pretty close-knit thing. But, uh, hey, picked it off. And, uh, again, because these are sort of, I'm slightly less interested in the subject matter, I haven't bothered, like, tabbing them as I go. So I don't have full reviews for these, although I do have one or two full Shakespeare reviews coming along for the ones I enjoyed more. So keep your eyes peeled. All right, guys, just one book to wrap up for you today, and that is This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So uh, this was his first novel. I think he was only 23 when he wrote it. Um, and it does definitely kind of bear a few of the hallmarks of like a first time or a newbie writer, but also there's like some lots of genuine literary good stuff here. Uh, overall, I gave this a 3.5 out of five. I thought it was cool how it plays with format. So um, for example, we have here, this is like a play and we have some poetry. Uh, as well so yeah it's uh, experimental like and it's quite interesting for the time it was published like in the, uh, 1920 it was published and um, this kind of is really what solidified his his position in literature as well and made sure that people were listening so that when he released The Great Gatsby he had a readership already so I think that's pretty cool all right just a few books to wrap up for you today uh, I have King Henry the sixth part one two and three in the folio society editions uh, part one I gave, well I gave 3.5 out of 5 to all of them, but part one and part three I rounded down to three, and part two I rounded up to, f no, part one was rounded up to four, part two was rounded down to three, part three was rounded up to four I think. Part one had Joan of Arc in it as a character which was great. These are like three plays in the uh, War of the Roses cycle. I guess plays six to eight, I think. Uh, I'm not that interested in monarchy or British history, I'm afraid, so kind of slow going for me, but um, they're kind of ones that, they're actually the last unread Shakespeare's that I had, so that was why I was reading them, but it also meant I wasn't particularly interested and I was only reading them because I'm slowly working my way through Shakespeare's back catalogue. So yes, 
Then I read White Eye of the Needle by Chris Campbell. This was a poetry collection. Uh, this was a 3.5 out of 5 as well, but I'd rounded up to 4. I'm going to read you one of these poems because this is about High Wycombe, where I live. Which is funny because this guy is from Manchester, I think. Oh no. This collection was put together in Nottingham and also includes pieces from the former journalist time in Bristol, London, Swansea, Glasgow and Gloucestershire, plus visits abroad including a honeymoon in Madagascar and trips to Teens, France. I think that's how you pronounce that place. And um, yeah, so it's just funny that there's one about High Wycombe. Newborn Sunshine. A white stork flies over West Wycombe Hill, delivering a bundle to Stoke Mandeville. With the tender newborn comes a memorable dawn like the oranges brightening Seville. So yeah. Uh, it was alright, not particularly like amazing poetry, but also good enough, you know. Poems on life, love and lockdown, there were definitely some in there that you could tell were about lockdown, um, which I think was cool. And uh, then I read The Phantom of Menace, William Shakespeare uh, by Ian Dersher. So Dersher basically writes these um, plays that, I've just realised that the lighting's weird because of the door. So Dersher writes these plays that... Um, uh, Shakespeare inspired. He's also done Much Ado About uh, Much Ado About Mean Girls and one that's about Back to the Future as well. Uh, so I will get to those eventually but I've read the original Star Wars trilogy so now I'm working my way through the, the prequel trilogy and I think he's done the more recent ones as well but uh, I mean I guess I'll read them for completeness' sake but I'm not really familiar with the films. So yes Hello homies, it is your boy Dane. Uh, I missed off some books from the end of this wrap up. Uh, throughout the course of filming it or whatever, I must have lost a few of the bits of footage. So uh, I'm here to correct that issue. That's also why this wrap up is so late, in case you're wondering. So uh, the ones we missed, we missed The Lady of the Lake by Andrzej Sapkowski. This is another one of the Witcher books. Uh, I've now read all of the Witcher series, which is great. The Lady of the Lake was cool because um, it kind of it partly covers our world and it sort of taps into the King Arthur mythology and brings that in line with the Witcher books and Ciri is in it and stuff. She's the Lady of the Lake. Some great bits of dialogue as well. I did a full review of this, uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. That was a four out of five. Let me have A Maze of Death by Philip K. Dick. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't particularly remember this one. I've read a lot of sci-fi recently and I've read a lot of Dick and I've, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I've had enough of Dick, mate. I'm, my brain is all over Dick. I've got fucking Dick coming out of my eyeballs. So, uh, yeah, it was a 3.5 out of 5, but I already can't really remember too much about that one. Then we have Bilbo the Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. So this is uh, the French edition of The Hobbit. One that I read slowly but surely is one of my bedtime books. Uh, Charlie Heathcote, Charles Heathcote here on Booktube sent it to me. So thank you, Charlie. It was a pretty solid four out of five and I was impressed by how much of it I understood. Now, it kind of helped as well that I'm so familiar with the story of The Hobbit that it wasn't too difficult for me to kind of reconstruct what was going on even if I couldn't follow the French. Although I did manage to follow a lot of the French as well. I impressed myself. So yeah, four out of five for that. Then we have The Salmon of Doubt by Douglas Adams, and I've already done and posted a full review of this. Uh, this is some like collected non-fiction. Now, it is a bit disjointed because it's basically just a load of stuff that was found on his hard drive after he passed away. So there are bits from like, um, you know, uh, things that he wrote for magazines and stuff. Uh, there's a, also includes as well like a draft of uh, the type the title of the book comes from uh, a draft of a new Dirk Gently book that he was writing, although he did realise it probably wasn't going to work as Dirk Gently and was going to need to be turned into a hitchhiker's book, um, but that was kind of incomplete at the time of his death. But yeah, it was just a nice way to read some more Adams. Uh, there was some stuff by uh, Richard Dawkins in there, because Dawkins was good friends with him, and I happen to have read quite a lot of Dawkins as well. So uh, yeah, overall pretty solid 4 out of 5, and definitely a must read for Adams fans, especially if you've read all of the Hitchhikers and all of the Dirk Gently books. Then we have Gotta Get Through This by Louis Theroux. This is his like memoir, essentially. Now, what I will say is that it, he even said in his afterword, he was like, um, I'd written loads of this about my relationship with Jimmy Savile, because obviously after Savile's death, it came out that he was a paedophile. And um, so Theroux kind of spent a lot of time soul searching and wondering, wondering whether he could have spotted the signs and could have done something about it while Savile was still alive. But then he kind of realised that nobody wants to read a book that's all about just Jimmy Savile, who was a right old knobhead. Um, but it is very heavy on the Savile. It does include some other stuff as well. I also didn't realise that Louis Theroux was such a stoner. Like, really comes across he spent a lot of time smoking weed. Um, but overall, pretty good. Four out of five. I reckon if there's an audio book narrated by him, which I assume there is, that'd probably be a really good uh, little reading experience as well. 
And finally we have Eye in the Sky by Philip K. Dick. Now pretty much all I can remember about this one is like the central premise and where it gets its title from, which is that these people like uh, this science fiction story or whatever and these people see an eye in the sky you know that's where it comes from again I did a more full review of this not long after I finished reading it so I can tell you a lot more about it in there but uh, again a fairly forgettable Philip K Dick novel not amongst his best 3.5 out of 5 though still alright I mean even Dick at his worst is still pretty good so that brings us to the end of my March 2021 reading wrap up. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.